What's going on guys? The uh, unemployment numbers were put out for February. We had 678,000 added jobs and unemployment is at back down to 3.8%. And I'm here to tell you <laughs> the recession is still on and I'm about to tell you why. All right, first of all, once again, shout out to the nerd tribe to the folks who leave the well constructed well thought out comments and to the people who just want to put in a slick comment without any research you're just stupid and if you're just stupid your comment gets deleted and you get blocked because you're not here trying to do anything constructive you're just here as a hater all right, so once again, shout to the nerd tribe. Make sure that, that that's not hitting. And let's get into this discussion. First of all, 600 and first of all, the jobs numbers were down in January. And the 678,000 jobs. I, and this has happened several times. If you go ahead and fast forward three or four months they'll go back and revise these job numbers but they won't put them out i mean it, they won't there won't be the fanfare of the first of the month job numbers but historically these numbers have been revised several times several times so um expect that to happen and also what type of jobs are these this is something that I have noticed in my personal life that, you know, I'm a big DoorDash person and I, I do a lot of DoorDash and there's routinely restaurants, smaller restaurants that are literally closed in the middle of the day. Now let's go ahead and take, we have all of these jobs, 678 jobs created, right? Nobody wants these jobs. Are these jobs? Minimum $50,000 a year jobs? No, they're not. These are fifteen dollars to $35,000 a year jobs. The vast majority of these jobs. These are crappy jobs. Now, what did we just go through? We just went through the pandemic. We're coming out on the tail end of the pandemic. And a lot of people have decided that they will, and I'm going to explain to you how they're doing it. They've decided that if they can't get the job that they want, a job that they desire, they won't work. It's just that simple. And this is something, you know, once again, luxuries once tasted become necessities. When you have had a period of time where you're able to sit at home, smoke weed, play video games, have sex, get a check, not get kicked out, not get your car repossessed. And this went on for months. For some people, this went on almost two years. Your incentive to work a job that you don't like is gone. Now, how are these people pulling this off? If you look at the demographic information, we have the highest number of adult children living with parents since the turn of the century. And then we couple that with the hobo sexual revolution, the number of people who are staying with someone, they're giving up that vagina, they're giving up that penis to have a place to stay because times are hard out there. Now, there's all of these jobs that no one wants. That's not a good thing for our economy. This is why the recession is still on. There's a lot of people who are opting not to work if it's not something they want to do. And I feel that this is the first time in history that this has happened because we got to look at why is the United States of America creating all of these shitty jobs. And if you look at the United States of America, we don't manufacture anything. I have a friend that's trying to start an e-commerce brand and she was searching for boxes for her product stateside. Couldn't find it, just couldn't find it. it. It's like she had to go straight to China. And 
one of the big issues that we have and one of the reasons that we're creating all of these low wage jobs, we're creating low wage service sector jobs, uh, working in fast food restaurant, working in the restaurant, working in the hotel, working at the car rental counter, working. It, it, these are these are pretty much dead end jobs. Once you go in this job, you know, you might get into a hotel chain like Hilton and go in and work and you could potentially work your way up the chain. I don't know how the hotel industry works. I've never had a job in the hotel industry, so I don't know how that would work, but that's could be a potential possibility. But this is why the recession is still on. And I did go ahead and get my sour cream and onion chips. And I did get my nutter butter cookies from Amazon. They were not at Walmart or Sam's Club. And that's one of the big issues because nationally, we have a lot of people who are, if they can't do what they want to do, they're just simply not going to work. It's simply not going to work. And because they're having the, their lifestyle subsidized by mom and dad, or in the case of a hobosexual, this person who has a place, they're able to, you know, they're able to pay the rent and without the assistance of the hobosexual, this has given people license not to work, not to be part of the workforce. So the 678 jobs created in January sounds really, really good. Sounds good. But when you look at these jobs actually suck, the vast majority of them suck and no one wants to do them. And let's say, March, we create a million jobs that suck. <laughs> Same thing's gonna happen. Uh, I've literally seen restaurants struggling. I've seen a lot of small fast food, like I've seen fast food restaurants closed in the middle of the day because they, they were having staffing issues. So as long as we have mom and dad and the hobo sexual revolution, these people are not going back to work. They're just not. They're going to, I know of someone who's part of the hobo sexual revolution. Actually, I, I know more than, I know quite a few people. And uh, this chick is, she's trying to become an Instagram baddie. She lives with a dude. She got the goods. She got the titties. Like, I, I'm not going to talk about that because, you know, one of the things I have come to learn, and this is a departure from the, the main commentary is I never know who's watching these videos and literally 15 women that I have dated have found my YouTube channels. So I am being very judicious about what I talk about in my YouTube videos because it is, it, it, it's, it's kind of funny because once again, look, look, you know, and this is the radical departure. We'll get back to the main conversation in a minute. But um, one of the things that we have seen is, well, one of the things I've seen back in the day, I used to have my club name. My club name was my dating name because I know everyone goes to Google and my club name was situated in a manner where they could find some stuff, but they could not um, actually pinpoint who I was or what I was doing. So they couldn't actually get the real information on who I was. So therefore they couldn't find the YouTube channels. So I didn't have that problem until recently. Last um, three or four years, I've had that problem. And it's, it's, a, it's very interesting to navigate because uh, I, I say this because I've had someone present the homosexual option to me. <laughs> it was, I was like, really? Ah, uh, that ain't gonna work. That ain't, that's not gonna work. We're not doing that. But once again, one of the things that is happening with the homosexual revolution, with the homosexual uh, indoctrination is that it has given people the license not to work. It has given people the ability to not have to participate in the workforce because their standard of living 
is subsidized by someone else. Either it's mom and dad, or it may be that dude or that chick. But one of the things that you should understand, because as long as the United States of America continues to create these shitty or crappy jobs, they're going to be a, a, a staffing issue. It's just going to be a big, big time staffing issue because these people are in the position where they don't have to take these jobs. And this is why the recession is still on. This is why the recession is once again, I wouldn't be surprised if the recession starts rolling through the fourth quarter of this year. But I once again have pegged the recession for 2023. Now, now what is the big problem? These companies have all of these jobs that no one's going to take. So this is going to dramatically reduce their productivity. It's going to dramatically reduce their capacity. And this is going to drag the economy down. Because like I said, next month, they can create two, month, two million shitty jobs. Uh, people are not going to take them. People are not going to work them. So this is one of the big issues. And this goes back to 1971 when we started to offshore all our manufacturing because that manufacturing sector enabled a good part of America to become middle class. And in some cases, upper middle class, because you could not graduate high school and go work on the factory floor and you can be an apprentice and then you can be a foreman, then you can be a shop manager, then you can work yourself up into management. There were so many things that you could do. So that's pathway to upper to middle class America is gone. It's gone. And right now we have a whole bunch of people who are trying to be social media influencers, social media stars, and some will succeed. Some will succeed. Most will not because the social media game is really, really dicey at best. So one of the things that you will see as we move into it, like this is March and I'll be doing another video talking about the March jumpers because it, it doesn't matter if these jobs are created, if they're shitty jobs, it doesn't matter. People due to the pandemic have gotten in a situation where they're like, I am not taking that shitty job. I'm not doing it. I will, I will lay on my back or I will deliver that pipe or I will deal with my cranky mom and dad versus going out here and dealing with these shitty jobs. That's where we are. And this is why I feel that the die is cast for um, the recession because Here's another really, really big problem. These companies need workers, right? And without workers, these companies cannot grow without workers. Like there's one place that I like Roundhouse Burger. They have tremendous staffing issues. Uh, literally, I would try to order from them in the middle of the day. They'll be closed. Uh, I'll try to order from them on Friday and say they'll be open on Monday. They're having ridiculous staffing issues. And these restaurants are going to continue to have staffing issues. Grocery stores are going to continue to have staffing issues. Amazon uniquely has created its own system. Amazon has created its own ecosystem. They know that people are going to come to Amazon, work in the warehouse, and gonna, they know that they probably have the stats that they can predict within a great deal of accuracy when they have a new hire and how long that new hire is going to last. And they're just like, we're going to roll with it. We're going to roll with it. You know, working in an Amazon warehouse, working in an Amazon hub, it's hard. I did a video uh, about this dude who was an Amazon driver who literally said he was out. He was going to quit because it was too much work. And that's another issue. We have a situation where Americans are not as hardy as they used to be. Um, America's really soft. So if person like with this great resignation, and that's another issue. That's another reason I feel that we're running toward a, resin, uh, a recession is that people are like, I am not working these jobs. 
if I don't like these jobs, I don't like the culture, I don't like my boss, I don't like the pay, I'm out. And this is going to be a huge, huge, huge problem. And I feel that the corporations are gonna hold the line. They're not gonna change what they're doing because they know ultimately there's only so long that these people can hold out. Now for the people who are living with mom and dad, they can hold out until mom and dad pass on. Uh, the homosexuals, long as the relationship is good, long as they're giving up their vagina and living up their pipe, they can, they can weather the storm, so to speak. But for um, parents, for people who have little kids, people who are married, who have responsibilities, they can't. They cannot hold the line for that long. This is only, I feel the great resignation is just going to be a tiny blip in the history of working. You know, right now it's, you know, and there's like literally, you could just put in, I quit in YouTube in a number of videos. And th these are people, like I was watching a video of this girl, she was an attorney, $350,000 a year, and she quit her job. So once again, it's not about pay. It's about, does this job make me happy? Because literally you can go and put I quit or great resignation in YouTube and you will see thousands of videos of people like, hey, I quit my job today. I quit my job today. Some of these people just quit their job. They don't even have another job lined up, which is crazy to me. But once again, I feel the rest the recession is on because this great resignation and the I will not take this shitty job attitude is going to pressure corporate America to make changes and they will accommodate. And this is going to speed up automation. Like I said, I put it like five years in the future where you would go into a restaurant and you won't see anyone. You will see a kiosk, you put your order in the kiosk and your food will slide out of the tray. I'm going to put that at two years now. That will be the adjustments that corporate America will make. And honestly, corporate America wants to make that adjustment because it's cheaper. Because essentially their labor costs dramatically reduce when they bring in automation. There's this robot called Flippy. You can find it here on YouTube and it makes burgers and it scrapes the grill and all this other stuff. Um, when they get to the point where they can create an autonomous sentiment, sentiment, uh, sentiment, I forget the word, um, sentiment, I think, being. And what this means is a robot that has full articulation of the hands that can walk and move and bend. And when they get to that, now that I figure is 15 years away. When they can have a fully humanoid form robot that can do all of these repetitive tasks, game over. Uh, these low waste jobs will disappear because you would be able to go out and buy, let's say a robot costs 25,000. And the, this robot has a life cycle of 10 years. So literally your first, cause and th this is the thing, and this is going to open up. Once we get automation across the board, we're going to have 24 hour restaurants. Why? Robots don't have to sleep. Robots don't have to go to the bathroom. So we're gonna see a lot of 24 hour operations because essentially there will not be any humans there. There might be one human there to manage the robots or a few humans to manage the robots. But what's gonna happen is you're gonna be able to go to your favorite restaurant, your favorite grocery store, whatever, whenever you want to, because they'll be open. Because having these automated employees, they don't have to have vacation time. They don't have to have sick days. They don't take days off. And this is what corporate America is waiting on. Like, I don't know when this is going to happen, but I know this is going to happen. When we get to the point where we have fully automated semi trucks, it's going to happen. I don't know when I can't give you a timeline. This is what's going to happen. Like right now, human drivers can only drive so many hours and then they have to take a break, right? Once we get these automated trucks on the road, they will be able to run 24 seven. So let's say the automation cost 145,000, 
right? Because they will be able to run this truck 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They will get their money back in months because this opens up the opportunity for the trucks to run longer, harder. And once again, once you start to remove humans from the equation, so many things open up. So many things become part of the grand design. And this is what I, I figure, you know, in the future, everything is going to be open 24 hours because you're not going to need to have a human in the equation. And like I said, the autonomous trucks are coming. I don't know when, but they're coming because trucking is such a labor intensive business and it's a high capital business that if you can take that human driver out of the seat, game over. You got the truck that you could run maybe 11 hours a day. This truck now starts to run 24 hours a day. It's just dropping, dropping off, picking up, dropping off, picking up, dropping off, picking up without a break, without a break. So their uh, truck, their trucking costs go down and their trucking productivity explodes. And this is one of the reasons I feel that we're going to have universal basic income because once this automation starts to take over the number like this, these job reports are going to be kind of silly. Uh, I feel in 10 years, we're not even going to have uh, 10, 15 years. We're not even going to have these job reports because if your job can be taken over by automation or an automated bean or something like that, it will be, it's not a matter of when it's going to, if it's going to happen, that's not part of the equation. It's going to be a matter of when it's going to happen. And this is one of the things. So right now, all of these folks who are turning up their noses at these shitty jobs. And you know what? I'm going to say something. I've never worked in the restaurant industry. I have never worked in fast food. I've never had those type of jobs. I've never worked in the, I, I don't even know what that's like. And I've had some pretty good jobs. I've had some shitty jobs, but I have no clue to what it's going to be like for people who are unskilled because going forward, if we do not have skills, skilled workforce, because this is like right now, this is what the skilled people get to do. The skilled people who have the ability to work from remote, they don't have to live in New York. They don't have to live in California. They don't have to live in Atlanta. They can live in this little small town in boot crest, Colorado. If that's even a town, I don't even know. I'm just pulling it off my head. They can live in this town and make 80, 90, hundred, $150,000 a year working from home. So this has completely flipped the workspace. And if you are a worker with a high level of skill sets, you're going to be able to do whatever you want. You're going to be the command the salary you want to work. You're going to be able to live where you want. So we're going to have an economy that's it's the dichotomy of the economy is going to be really real. We're going to have a whole bunch of people over here with no skills, no skills whatsoever. And then we're going to have a gr smaller group of people over here who are skilled to the teeth. They got all types of skills. And these people are going to be making 150, 250, 300, 450,000 a year. And then we're going to have all these folks over here with no skills. We're going to be on universal basic income. I feel that we're going to have subsidized housing in the future. Like I'm saying 15 years because look what a two year pandemic did to America, what it did to the world. It literally changed the mores of the world. And like I said, uh, shout out to David Dinkins who contacted me about 75% of uh, Americans don't make $35,000 a year. This is going to get worse. It's not going to get better. Once automation gets plugged in the way that they want it to be plugged in. If you are a person who doesn't have any skills, it's going to be real hard for you to make money. It's going to be very hard for you to make money. It's going to be ridiculously hard for you to make money. You think it's bad now? Just wait, just wait, just wait. 15 years in the future, they're like, like I said, 
that's when I feel that they're going to have the fully automated beings or robots that you know, articulation, like, you know, like our hand, the move the hand like that. Some we take for granted to get this type of movement in an automated hand is a lot of technology. There's a ton of technology, but once they get this type of articulation and finger movement in automation, game over because they're gonna be able to create automated hands that are gonna have pressure sensitivity. It's like, oh, if this load is heavy, we need to apply more pressure. If this load is light, we need to apply bare pressure. And they're gonna get this automated, this our fully articulating hand. It's coming, it's coming. Once they get this, so many things like, you ever get some uh, packages of something from, uh, you order some online and it comes and it's wrapped in rope or something, a human has to do that because there's nothing that can do that. Once we get these fully articulated hands, all that disappears. So a lot of jobs I feel in 15, 20 years are literally going to disappear. When they get that, you know, um, Boston Robotics, they're the ones that have all these funny robotic uh, videos online. 15, 20 years, once we get to that point, there will, no, there will not be any more low wage work. There won't be. And we're gonna, I, I wonder, because 15 years from now, I will be 70. So I'll still be kicking around. And I think 25 years from now, it is going to be really, really interesting. It's gonna be really, really different. And society is going to be so different. But once again, these job numbers, like next month, the job numbers can come out and they could be even higher. But here's the thing. If they're shitty jobs, people are not going to take them because they're living with mom and dad. They're doing this hobo sexual thing and they're in the, they have the ability where they don't have to take these jobs. You just don't. And this is one of the things that's gonna bring on the recession because the United States of America operates on GDP, gross domestic product. Because these companies cannot get people to fulfill these jobs, this dramatically lowers the gross domestic product, which I feel will bring on the recession. And then there's other things that like this war, like I try not to talk about Russia and Ukraine, but because it's, it's a lot to read up on, but that war could trigger a recession by itself. That war, if everything else was fine, then we just had this war because one of the things they wanted to do was take Russia off the SWIFT systems and a lot of countries did not agree because Russia supplies 40% of the oil and gas to Europe. That is not an insignificant number. And even though Russia is invading Ukraine, there are European countries that are still buying oil and gas from Russia. They're still doing it. So it, it, it becomes really complex. It becomes a big thing and we will see, we will see. But the recession is still on. And like next month, the, empl the employment number, the, the job creation numbers. See, here's the thing. Don't think job creation numbers. That's not what you wanna look at. You want to look at workplace participation numbers and workplace participation numbers are way off. We have very, we have a workplace, a working population of 160 million people. And I don't have that information. I'll have it for the next video, but I have a feeling that workplace participation is way off. And what is workplace participation? The people who could work, but choose not to. This is a big, big issue. And I feel that this issue is gonna grow because here's something else that's a little departure, but at the moment, we in the United States are not reprodu reproducing at a rate to replace ourselves. Uh, if you would look at the population, the population in the United States of America in 1960 was like 170 million. And then we had the baby boom, and then we got up to 330 million. We've been kind of stuck at 330. Our population isn't growing. That's problematic. 
that's very problematic because as the population grows, as the demographic grows, this increase, this is an increase for housing, uh, products, cars, so on and so forth. But we're, our population is actually starting to decline. This is a big problem for industries and corporations because let me go ahead and let's just kind of walk through this. Let's say people were still reproducing like they did in the 60s. We would have a population of about 500 million if that had kept on right now. We'd be about 500 million people in the United States of America. That additional 170 million people will literally create new industries, new opportunities, new cash flows. It, it would be really different in the United States of America right now if people had continued to reproduce the way that we were in the 60s. We'd be at about 500 million. There would be, it would be a different world. We would have different categories. Everything would be different. That 170 million additional people would have literally changed how and what we do here in the United States of America. But they don't exist because feminism, feminism is a big reason that we start reproducing. Literally, I think half the women in the United States don't have children. First time that's ever happened. First time that's ever happened. So just stay tuned. And like I said, next month, if job creation goes up, big whoop. What you want to look at is workplace participation. And I guarantee you the workplace petition, I already know that it's down. How do I know? A lot of people retire. A lot of people exit the workforce and they're not coming back. The people who are in the position to retire, they, they did. And they're not coming back. They're not working. So that right there, a whole bunch of people who are leaving the workforce for retirement dramatically reduce workplace participation number. Once again, you don't want to look at job creation. Uh, if we're creating a whole bunch of shitty jobs that no one wants, that it's just going to be a job that was created that will go unoccupied. But what we want to look at is workplace participation. And that's...